Alright, welcome to the tutorial on creating a vector piece of art in Adobe Illustrator. If you would like to do anything in an Illustrator over time, you need to be very comfortable with one tool, and that is the pen tool. So I just want to walk you through what vector art is in the first place, and then get you familiar with the pen tool again, and how to perfect it, live group, and create images. So, what you're going to do is if you go to Google, I just found a cartoon character, um, but if you put the word vector into your Google search and you put anything behind it, so if I say vector designs, I'm going to get anything that's a graphic, a solid graphic, please ignore my son screaming, <laughs> anything that's a solid graphic is going to appear. Um, vector people is also um, the next kind of level when you're uncomfortable um, oh, wow, it's actually, when you're comfortable with the pen tool you'll be able to actually take it and create um, more like a design like this where you've converted a whole photograph into a vector form um, but to start sometimes it's easier to do animals or characters uh, and you'll get like basic things you can choose whichever one you want or you're more than welcome to try and find uh, the alligator I used, um, which was under vector characters. Um, and I just scrolled the art and I found the alligator, which is gone. Uh, you're more than welcome to use any image, though. Um, any cartoon is the easiest way to start because they're kind of like three or four shapes um, over and over again, and the color scheme isn't as crazy. Yeah. So, if I open up Adobe Illustrator and make a new document, this is what my screen looks like. The pen tool is in the second section of icons. Uh, if you hold your left cursor clicker down, you're going to get a bunch of options to basic pen tool, add, delete, convert. You cannot use the bottom three until your design is started. So if you're trying to work and you're like, nothing's happening, that is because you're not on the very first one. Now, once the pen tool is selected, you're gonna have some options along the top. The first one is the fill color. Second is the outline color. Third is the size of the outline. When you click, it's going to fill in the picture. So I highly recommend not drawing with the fill tool because what if I need to trace back in here? I can no longer see it. So just going to delete that for a sec and always try and draw with no fill which is the very first one and then at the end once your whole design is done you complete the fill again I try and use it at not quite one point to draw three I might not want three in my final piece but it's easier for me to trace out and see where I'm working when I have a thicker paintbrush uh, this is if you want to change the style um, a lot of people who make swatches like stars and stuff you make a bunch of strokes and change the edging at the end. Um, again, the paintbrush after that too, and there's tons of options within it. Pasty is how see through the line actually ends up being. So, we're gonna do some artwork together with pen tool. So select pen tool and only an outline color and the three point stroke. If I'm, right, I'm going too fast, just pause the video and do the step and then continue on. If you click once, it sets your first anchor point. There's no line, but it tells you where the line is going to start. Then I would move my cursor and click again and that's how I'd get my line. If I want to make a 100% straight line I would hold shift then click and it doesn't matter which way you're going if you're holding shift it's going to make perfectly straight lines. Now to make a curved line you have to do something a little bit different. You go to where you want the line to end, hold your left cursor click down, don't let go of the left cursor click but move your mouse around. What happens when you move your mouse around is you get these lovely, they're called handlebars, and you're able to create a kind of a shape um, by moving far apart, rotating, and create like the height of the curve. In a moment, Jaden, okay? Go watch a movie. Sorry. Um, the problem is if, is if you don't release the anchor point, the next curve is automatically going to go the opposite. I can't turn my handlebar to be different than that anchor point. So once you've done a curve, always use Alt. See what happens here, I get a triangle. When I hold down Alt, it converts to a triangle. Click the last anchor point. 
not the handlebars last anchor point. And then when I click and hold, I can go either way perfectly. Hold Alt, release the last anchor point, and I can go either way perfectly. Okay. Jaden, in one moment, okay? Sorry. So that's how you create your basic lines. And if I want to continue, I always just release all whenever I'm done. But if I want to just close this off, I can just close it once I go to the very beginning. When you're ready to close, see how it has a circle when you close next to the closing point? That tells you your shape would close. And at the end, if I then, once I've closed my shape, I can go to my color here and add a fill color. And the whole thing would have a fill. I could even choose, now I don't even want an outline. You could remove the outline color. Um, only if your piece is selected, sorry. I could remove the outline color and I just have the fill color. But this is why you do it at the end. It's just easier to work with just the outline. And there's never too late. And you can change it either on the left-hand side or the top-hand side. You can change your colors. Okay? So that was a little refresher of the pen tool. Why it matters just today is because we're going to take an image, which I took this little dragony guy, and I'm going to see how it has these fine edges. If I were to resize it, it become more and more pixelated, even though I'm taking an image of a vector because I don't have the raw vector file, which is an illustrator file. If I go to zoom in, it's going to become pixelated and pixelated and pixelated and pixelated and pixelated and pixelated. And that's not the whole point of a vector, okay? So once you've been able to actually create a vector, which is here's my vector, if I zoom in and zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, do you notice how it never becomes pixelated? So this is the benefit to a vector, and this is why all logos are made in Illustrator, because they never become pixelated. So if you're making a logo for a business card, or if you're making a logo for a poster in Times Square, if it's an Illustrator file, you just resize it at any point, and it, it's a mathematic angle calculation to say this is the degree of the size, and it resizes it to my new file size. So um, this is my alligator, and you can see I can select any point on my alligator. So if I just want to change one color, I could change just one color, which I cannot do when I've brought in an image of an alligator. So um, what I'm going to do is ask you to go into here, find your, let's see if you can recreate that one. Oh, there you go, vector dragon cartoon. Go to it. Always go to view original image, it'll open up the biggest size possible. And then just copy image, go back to your Illustrator file, Command V, paste the image. Now the first thing I want you to do is open your layers palette, which if you don't see it, you just go to window and then there'll be the word layers. Okay. Um, and then lock that layer. The reason why you lock it is when you're recreating your dragon, there's nothing worse than the image moving after you've been working on it for 10 minutes. So always lock that layer first. You won't be able to draw on it, so you won't let me do anything. I've got my pen tool, I can't do anything. The layer's locked. I'll make a new layer, and this is the layer I will work on. Okay, so if you wanna say, you can say original, and I could double click this one and call it my design. And then I'll actually be able to recreate my design, okay? So what you're going to do might sound a little bit tedious. Um, it is the only way to become comfortable with Illustrator is to be strong at the pen tool. So once you have your image, grab the pen tool. Make sure you set it up so there's no fill. Find a nice bright color that's contrasting to your design. So I wouldn't use green or black because they're there and I don't want to get confused with what I'm working on. I'd find something nice and bright. Usually use pink because it's easy to see. Put a thicker line, you can change it any time. You are literally going to start with the outline. So I'm going to, I'm going to start right here. Click my first anchor point. Click and hold, right, for where the curve would end, and then try and match the curve. Um, don't worry if it's not 100%, you will get better and better over time. Hold Alt, release the anchor point. Go to the next point. Create any curve as needed. Release the anchor point. And all you're going to do is click your way around the whole thing. Okay. Once you have the whole outline done, then you'd start with the insides. Okay. So I'm just going to say I've created that whole outline. I've gone all the way around. Let's just say it's nice and neat. On all the way around and back to the beginning. 
then I what I would do is I would create a new layer and I would create the eyes because it's a separate piece right so I'd create the outline for the eyes and that clearly isn't gonna work so plan set undoes I'm gonna create my eyes And now I'm just going to show you what you do when you've created kind of a couple of shapes. Okay, so here are my eyes layer. What you're going to do once you have a couple of your shapes done, and I just hit the eyeball on the My Design so we could work on the outline together, um, is you're going to grab the white cursor to select it. So it's just the thing that's active. Zoom into it. Command plus, command minus also zooms. Okay. I did this one not very well on purpose because I want you to see how you actually fix lines when you haven't succeeded. So what you do is underneath the pencil tool, there's one called the smooth tool. And if you actually go over a curve with the line selected, it starts to smooth it out. Okay. Say you didn't realize it wasn't connected. You're able to grab that white cursor select the node, that's what little squares are called, once. Then the second time, you're able to actually move it. Same deal, select it once, then you're able to move it the second time, okay? If you realize that, oh my goodness, there really should have been one more, I can't pull it down, then you grab your pen tool, add an anchor point, grab the white cursor, and then it, you're able to recreate it. And then you'd go back to your smooth tool, and you'd re-smooth out the shape, okay? So at no point is it ever too late. Oh, I really wish there was an anchor point there. Grab your plus tool, create an anchor point, grab your white cursor, and then you can either move the anchor point or even move the handles of the anchor to recreate the curve. Okay? So it's never too late with your design to move stuff at any point and recreate the design you're really hoping for. But if you find that you just, I'm just going to do this on purpose, if you just go into it and try and move it. It might move the whole thing. If you just click on it and then try and move it. Um, it sometimes, that's really not what I'm trying to do. Sometimes it can move the whole thing. Sometimes it's really weird. But if once the line's selected and then you click the node to move it, it moves just the node. Um, then I would create my fill. So I know that I want this to have, let's say my color is going to be that yellow and then I have no outline needs or maybe I want to go back to the thin black line I could do that as well oh hey, hello hot spots sorry let me what I want to be um okay Jaden hold on a second I'll be right there go watch a movie for a minute okay thank you oh, I'll be right there Jaden sorry so Let's say I've changed my outline color back to the black or purple. There you go. Uh, black cursor, and then selecting it gives me back my original menu, and I can go back to one point. And then I've done my eyes. The problem is I can't see the shape below, so I'd hide this, lock it because I know it's done, hide it, and then I'd grab my pen tool. And I'd actually go through again on my new layer, and I'd make the eyeballs. And if you hit alt and don't hit the anchor point, it gets mad at you. That's what mine just did. Okay, and then I go, I don't want an outline, I just want bright pink eyes. Okay, and then I can do a couple on this because they're not the same thing. Or I can choose to copy and paste. I give myself two eyes. And now, something to note, because it's in a layer below it, um, I can see it. If you at any point move your layers around, like so, I can't see the eyes because they're underneath the green layer. So just make sure that your layers are organized in a way that you can see what's on top in your layer panel, what's up top is in the foreground, and what's below is in the background, okay? So at any point you need to move layers, you're more than welcome to, 
you just hold it and drag it. But just make sure what's on top is in the foreground. So I'm done those, so I'm gonna lock them, be done. Okay? And then I'd go on to the next point that was inside because you can only do the outside in one go. So I'd have to do the next point would probably be the belly and I'd click, 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 and then fill your colors in. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but it's the only way to perfect your skills at it. And then you'll end up with an actual character that you can be proud of. Um, once you're done that, if you really want to challenge yourself, I'd make a new template and I would actually try and create a vector character. Um, so I'm going to go back to my Google and find a person. Um, I just want to show you what the end result you're kind of looking for is. So let's This is kind of the end result you're going for, where it's an actual vector graphic. Um, so here's the comparison. The picture, can be a picture of yourself, the end result. And if this is done by choosing highlights and lowlights and actually tracing each thing on a different layer to create. Okay? So that's how that's done. Um, and so that's what we're going to try and create. So by all means, feel free to use a picture or feel free to find a celebrity and recreate the celebrity. So you're more than welcome to do that. Um, so I'm just going to help you set that up. Okay, so let's find celebrities. Let's see what comes up when you Google celebrities. All right, so I'm going to do Angelina Jolie. Go always go to the original image. You're going to get the highest image possible. See the difference that made by just clicking it? Never copy the thumbnail. See how it becomes from this size to a larger size? Always go to the original image. Copy the image. Go to Illustrator. Paste your image. I'm going to zoom out by Command minus. I'm just going to resize it to the size of my document. So when I'm done, this is going to actually create an actual cartoon image. I lock that layer, create my new layer, and I'm going to start by organizing my layers. Hair, dark, new layer, double click it, hair, light, um, you should always have three and then wherever the highlights are in the hair. And then you do the same thing. For skin, you would do skin shadows, skin normal, skin light. And the reason why you want three for each piece is because that's the only way you'll actually create the contrast. So if I look at her skin, for example, you can see that this is going to be a lighter space the normal is going to be kind of here, and then the shadows are going to be here. So if I'm going to grab my shadows, grab my pen tool, and I'm actually literally just going to click around where I feel the shadows are in her skin. Okay? It is going to look ridiculous until you're done, I promise you. Um, but the very final thing looks super cool. This is an eyedropper tool where you can actually try and grab the color of the shadow. See what happened there? I'm going to redo that in case you can see it. So I, instead of being on my pen tool once it was in the shape, I grab the eyedropper and I grab the dark color, so grabbing the color. What I like to do in addition to this, to make it perfect, is I go to Effect, Stylize, Feather. And what it does is it creates a feathered edge. That was obviously too big of a feather. So Stylize, Feather, Effect, Stylize, Feather. I'm going to put this to like 0 0.05. See what it does? It creates a blurred edge. I'll zoom into that so you can really see it. Um, it creates a blurred edge on the outside as opposed to a sharp edge. And that's how your colors will blend perfectly. So I would do my darks and then I'd click off. I'd probably go with some skin hot lights. And I trace the shape right here. Alt release. And it goes up here. Kind of goes inwards a little bit. 
it's okay if you're just kind of guesstimating because the final design will end up looking cool if you do enough pieces. This is the key. If you don't do enough pieces, it doesn't work. So I grab that skin color, effect, stylize, feather, okay, and it's going to start creating this mishmash of pieces that in the end will come together to create a very cartoon look of Angelina Jolie. Um, so again, if you're not really sure the style, there's tons of uh, vector Angelina Jolie. You never know if that's already online. There you go. So this is kind of what it creates. So you can see all the different shapes that were created to create the shadowing. Same with the hair. There was the dark, the regular, and the highlights. The dark, the regular, and the highlights. And you have to do the same with the lips, just the same with the eyes. There's always dark, middle, and high. Okay? Um, then, if you're good with that, you are golden with Illustrator. You can do anything from typography design to anything because everything is created through Pencil. If you ever want to try new things, just Google Vector Designs, Vector Anything. All of these are made in Illustrator with the pen tool. Alright, so that's it for your vector tutorials. Just try and work on the two designs and you'll you'll be golden with Illustrator. If you can do the cartoon, if you can do the person, you'll be good to go. And I will make a video on Photoshop next. Thanks.